Good morning. This is our first presentation in our three-part series, BIM for Manufacturers. We will start off this series with what does BIM mean for manufacturers? Today, we will be talking about BIM. What is BIM? How is it affecting the design industry and the impact and change that is happening now in the AECOM industry? How is this affecting us, the manufacturers? We will talk about ways that we can stay competitive and what is important to the designers, but most importantly, how this is affecting manufacturing and how we can participate in this growing process. Before we begin, I want to talk a little bit about M2 Technologies and all of the great things that you can find by having a relationship with us. M2 Technologies is a consulting firm that works with Autodesk products as well as EdgeCam products. Our focus is manufacturing and the software and tools that support that industry. We provide training for both software groups at our authorized training locations, or we can create custom training to fit your needs. Our technical consultants have a large range of knowledge on the industry, the software we use to create our products, and how our products are being used by the design community. We also have software developers and account executives as we are also a reseller for both Autodesk and EdgeCam softwares. Our office locations listed here on the right indicate our main offices and training centers, but we can help you wherever you are, even if you're not near one of these listed locations. My name is Louise Buchanan and I will be your presenter today. Just to give you a little information on my background, I am a business development manager here at M2 Technologies and I have extensive knowledge on the BIM process. I am an expert in Revit, Navisworks, SketchUp, AutoCAD, and a few of the AutoCAD verticals. I have over 15 years experience working within the AECOM industry and currently my main focus is working with manufacturers and building content that is BIM ready, but not only that to make sure that it meets both the needs of the manufacturer and the designer so that it includes both the data and the options and functions of the manufactured product. So now let's talk about what does BIM mean for manufacturers? I wanted to start off with a definition of BIM. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. This is a process, not a holistic link to one software, but the start of this process is with a 3D model. The model includes intelligence and data for all the parts of the building and allows AEC professionals the tools they need to work together better and design more efficient buildings where they can manage buildings and their infrastructure. Why use BIM? Well, let's take a look at where design was before BIM. In the 2D CAD world, you are basically in a sea of paper. At the end of a project, those drawing packages would end up on a shelf somewhere and forgotten and may be pulled out of storage to do a remodel or an addition, but the digital copy would either not be available or updated with the latest changes. So you are looking at outdated paper plans and multiple copies that have been stored, like in this storage room, all of the changes that have happened through the project, the archive files for a certain point in the project timeline, and any of the change orders may be in this room. For the digital file, the master file has layers for everything, and it is an overlapping sea of rainbow that can confuse the point. With a BIM file, you will be able to drive three-dimensional plans. You will see where problems will arise during the design phase rather than on the construction site where you need a change order in order to do a redesign. That costs additional money and slows down the delivery schedule. Being able to articulate your design to an owner in a 3D environment is a powerful tool. 2D lines do not always show the true design or what systems are intersecting and could be a problem like a 3D design would. Now with the use of BIM brings in new opportunities. New technology and the ever-growing level of quality and detail have smashed the doors wide open for new and better opportunities. AR and VR are broadening the understanding of how the building will feel as well as the capability of live on-the-go changes that can be uploaded to your master file. This gives us better ways to communicate to our team members and facilitate the building's purpose. BIM isn't just some fad that has come and gone and replaced by the next fad. It is a requirement by many countries, regions, and even down to the project. The owner will determine or demand a BIM deliverable at times. Owners are now more vested in their projects than we have seen historically. The final deliverable is able to be accessed 
as a digital file that can be stored for future use as the building changes through its life cycle versus paper plans sitting on a shelf for years and never updated. Through asset management tools, owners are able to drill down to the unit they need information on and run some analysis on how a needed change will impact the entire building. They can search a light fixture that has a five-year warranty on, a, on the ballast and be able to find out how many they have in their building and where they are located to create an action plan that they can include in their budget for that year or even five years down the road. Some of the trends that we are seeing with the continued growth of BIM are globalization, urbanization, and sustainability. Globalization is the huge action. We can no longer function in our small corner of the world. We are competing with everyone around the world to win these projects, even with other countries in our own backyard. Firms all around the world are competing for jobs outside their home country. So in order to stay competitive, we need to broaden our focus on and technology. Urbanization. As you can see, the percentage of people living in urban areas is continuing to increase and is expected to increase by 66% by the year 2050. That is double the amount of people that were living in urban areas in 1950. So in order to sustain the number of people that we currently have and are projected to have by 2050, we need more buildings. So this brings us to sustainability. With global warming as an actual event, climate change is a real thing. So with the bottom bullet here, if we double the number of buildings by the year 2050, if we don't do it in a more sustainable and smarter way, we will make our planet unlivable. So what does buildings have to do with global warming and climate change and carbon? Well, currently, 39% of CO2 emissions comes from buildings, followed by 33% for transportation, affecting climate change. So there is a real opportunity to look at the product we are putting into our buildings, how they are using energy and emitting carbon, and how we can change that for a better outcome. With the small steps we can take now, providing those data-rich models that are analysis ready to allow engineers to very quickly understand your product and how that product can affect the building's carbon footprint. Not only are we including the model number, the manufacturer, links to manuals, warranties, and maintenance schedules, but we can build an intelligence to these objects so that designers and subcontractors can better understand our products to help create a sustainable building. Again, having that information allows a designer to quickly do energy analysis because the information they receive from you. This gives you a competitive edge and it drives designers to want to use your products in their models. As a wrap up on BIM, the goals of it are to add efficiency in areas of design and drive sustainability. This gives us bragging rights, marketing capabilities, and this will give them better predictability to the outcome of their projects through analysis and profitability, which will lead to cost reduction or cost avoidance. So why now? Why is this becoming a need now? Why was this not being discussed when we were required to provide CAD files to designers 10, 15 years ago? It has a lot to do with the turning point of where the industry is headed or a paradigm shift. But a big reason is Wi-Fi, accessibility to everything. We want access to it all and we are information junkies. The more information there is, the more we want to know. This is an image of New York City where these towers are being installed all around the city to allow for free Wi-Fi access from anywhere in the city. So connecting to anyone and everyone is that much easier and we will continue to see this ease of use condition increase as we continue to move forward. Also, we have the devices. These days, contractors have tablets as part of their work process. They can track changes from the job sites. And since children are getting devices at such a young age, Contractors have access to someone in their life that can always show them the new tool that's out there. I know it's scary. My daughter is seven and she's already asking for a smartphone. The cloud. The introduction of cloud technology has opened the doors to accessing this data from anywhere and providing feedback at an instance wherever you are. When you combine this with the devices we have, increased connection to Wi-Fi, it is a change we cannot ignore. Millennials. One of the largest generations we have ever had. They are now of age and are becoming part of our current workforce. They have a natural draw to technology as they grew up around it everywhere. 
They are drawn to using technology to do things faster and more efficiently. Millennials are changing the way we look at a project and pushing for new ways to understand and deliver the, that information. The goal of the BIM process is to have an organized and accurate model of real world conditions that can be maintained through its life cycle. So why should we get involved? This should be a win-win for everyone. With this becoming a mandate in multiple countries and that number will continue to grow year over year, the requirements on us will also continue to be pushed. Designers will want to spend their time designing and not creating products that are more intimately understood by us. It is our responsibility as manufacturers to allow this process to work and not be a hindrance to it. How is implementation of BIM taking off globally? There have been a number of countries which have mandated the use of BIM. Otters is among many other companies which are part of the UK's effort to define BIM specifications for public projects. There are many other infrastructure owners that are including or planning to mandate BIM deliverables. For example, several US transportation departments are calling for building accordance to BIM specifications. In fact, the MAP21 policy of the US incentivizes states for using 3D models and visualizations and using BIM effectively. We recently gave a BIM tour to the government in Japan where the RMIT group is leveraging Autodesk technology. Countries like Brazil, Mexico, Japan, and Finland are also pursuing BIM standards, similar to that of the UK. And actually, Finland is two years ahead of the UK. By the end of this year, all its public projects will have a BIM mandate. In the Middle East, Qatar, Dubai, and Saudi Arabia have BIM as part of their infrastructure specifications. We are working in Qatar around BIM specifications for infrastructure and buildings. Big economies are betting on BIM for public projects. The rest will certainly follow. However, there is still a long way to go. BIM is not just happening in isolated locations, and it's not just about the software. What we are seeing here is a global trend towards a different process for managing the life cycle of all assets in a built environment. BIM adoption varies by country, but the consistent theme is growing awareness, exploration, use, and adoption of the BIM process on a global basis. And what's driving this BIM adoption? Globally, Drivers ranging from government mandates to owner's preference to industry trend are driving levels of BIM adoption. The UK government's construction strategy states that BIM will become a key part of the government's procurement of public buildings. Since 2016, BIM has been mandatory on all public sector contracts. In the US, all major projects conducted by the US General Services Administration, the federal government's real estate management arm, require a spatial program BIMS as a minimum requirement for approval. Other public US government organizations that are developing programs and mandates regarding BIM include the US Army Corp of Engineers, the US Air Force, and the US Coast Guard. We wanna take a look at design build method versus a design bid method. So the design build method is the method that the design industry is now using. Historically with the design bid method, the project would start with an owner who would hold separate contracts with the designer and the contractor. And the contractor would then pick his team of subcontractors and within um, the designer's uh, specifications, that's how they would pick their products. Uh, for a lot of products, you would see a or equal being used in the specification. The contractor would then choose a product that would potentially save them a few dollars compared to the recommended product that was being shown in the plans. Um, historically, this could actually lead to many issues. Uh, the or equal product would have um, connections on the uh, opposite side of the product um, compared to the original design. And now that it is purchased, a change order needs to be issued for redesign so that the connected system um, to the building can be actually placed the correct way on the correct side of, of the object. Um, or the building was deemed as or and tested to meet certain LEED specifications. For instance, if it was a platinum LEED certified building, um, 
and the analysis used to get that certification was based off of the manufacturer's products that were supposed to be used in the project. And if the contractor then goes through and actually changes that to something that is quote unquote or equal, now that that particular certification may not meet the same guidelines or the same testing and therefore could actually uh, lose their lead certification or lose their platinum certification and that can affect the building cost to the owner and it can also affect um, the owner's um, price of if they ever wanted to sell that building worth thinking that they were going to have a platinum building and they ended up with a, a, a you know a gold or even a green um, lead certification. Where design build is becoming more and more popular trend these days, within design build, the owner typically hires a single entity to perform the design and the construction under one contract. In this method, you would see the purchase of the product uh, for the building done at an earlier stage of design and have more specific clarification on the products that are required on the project. Uh, High-level collaboration is also performed at an earlier stage of design so that potentially the need for change orders can be drastically decreased. So basically, if we do not have our content built into a BIM environment like Revit, we can't be competitive and we can't take part in some of these mandates and some of these um, projects that are requiring this. It also breaks the, the chain, if you will, of being able to analysis for things like lighting analysis, energy analysis, um, which is going to lead into those points for becoming LEED certified and everything on a, on a particular building or project. I wanted to talk about the BIM process and how it filters through the different segments of the level of design or LOD and how it comes together. For project planning, you will have deliverable guidelines, some of which may be web-based, or are open-ended and expect you to deliver content on future versions or standards. As we start with the project framework, we want to look at the different parties, and manufacturers are a big part of creating a successful project plan. Designers are planning these projects with manufacturer's content in mind. See how the building will feed information through each particular product to the rest of the system and how each part can affect the building ecosystem. That starts with having the exact model that will be purchased and not an or equal equivalent. File sharing and coordination is an integral part of the BIM process. We are no longer providing paper as the only deliverable. File sharing is happening at all points in the design, allowing for better planning prior to being on the construction site and making changes in the field. They are able to see and collaborate on the best solution for the design challenges they have at any point in the project. We've seen coordination done more frequently than in the past where projects were not using a BIM deliverable. They are able to hold these meetings via web like we are doing now or on site or a combination of the two through devices that are at our disposal. We are able to meet those guidelines that have been defined in a BIM execution plan and able to include those lead certification criteria and hold to the points that are needed to have the correct level of that certification. I wanted to include this picture as it gives you a great visual example of how different parties can look at a solution and what they hear and the solution that they thought was described to them versus taking a minute and really evaluating what they need. This will not always have all the bells and whistles. These communication problems can have real financial issues on a project that having a more defined plan can help solve. So BIM is a powerful tool for us and for the designers. FM is becoming a larger part of this process. I mentioned earlier that owners are more invested in these projects and we see this largely after the building is complete. We are seeing them take that digital asset and running their own analysis for their personal needs so that they can plan resources and budgets for what will be needed to run and keep the building running. But documentation is no longer just paper. With millennials in our workforce and them wanting a digital asset, paper will eventually go away. Lead and green are becoming more and more prominent in building projects. They answer a real need for sustainable buildings and through testing and the products that are used in these buildings will determine if they will have a silver, gold, or platinum level of the certification. Using a less sustainable product because it was cheaper can truly affect this deliverable. Analysis can be run for different purposes. You can run it for lighting, heating, and cooling, or structural as a few quick examples. 
all of which helps to create a better design. And of course, there are now many formats that the data can be transferred to. This is to share the model at different points of the project, either for coordination, analysis, or FM needs, and more. This is also in line with the BIM standards that are now in place in many countries or with many agencies that will be involved in various projects and project types. Final deliverables will be shown in many formats. VR and AR is revolutionizing how these projects are being delivered to owners. 3D information is important to these deliverables. So just some of the uh, immediate benefits that we're seeing from this approach uh, from a design and construction um, standpoint, we're seeing like there's a 40% of under budget change orders that's just being eliminated because they're not needed anymore. Um, and that kind of goes along with everything we've kind of discussed uh, up to this point as far as, you know, doing a design build um, versus the design bid. And then we're also seeing like 80% reduction in uh, time that it's taking to generate cost estimates because of the fact that it's all three-dimensional, it's all countable, it's all schedulable um, because the tools were given to them and they're able to use those tools, um, which is going to go with that cost estimation accuracy that they can have within a 3%. You can see that there's, there's a, definitely a savings and a reduction in project time because of, of the tools that they're able to use. So from a VPM design, construction, and O&M, um, and for cost and schedule, um, you can see that there's definitely in cost and construction savings by going with the BIM process, there's a reduction in the schedule, which means your buildings are being built faster and um, still of the same quality, um, but they are able to plan um, better because they have the tools at their fingertips to be able to use at the time that they need it. And we're seeing a reduction in overall maintenance costs. Um, and even um, 23 cents per square foot annual savings based on a simple access to the accurate information. And then um, a digital asset and for planning and design and future construction. So how can the BPM uh, be a contributor? How can, how can we help? Uh, we can help by providing a data-rich virtual building product that will support real world performance and analysis. It will support the world of its constructability analysis. It will provide true cost controls. It will provide um, the data that we need to actually make these analysis. And we can provide the size and uh, the space that's needed within the product along with any of the requirements, electrical requirements, HVAC requirements, all within that one product that then can be connected to the building systems and then can be run downstream on uh, maintenance costs. We can put in links for um, warranties and manufacturer information, uh, whatever is needed for that particular product. And that can all be translated into that digital building that they can pick on that particular object and find the information that they need to know about that object. So why us? Um, well. It allows us to become designed in. I mentioned earlier that between like design build and design bid, that there's still uh, quite a shift on how the process is going. And what we're finding is that with manufactured content, the at or equal is just kind of going away a lot. And so therefore, we um, are starting to see manufactured information that's getting designed into that, that project. And if they're calling you out, um, even during the design stages, before you even get to construction documentation, that we're actually seeing just a paradigm shift in how that information is getting translated. And if we don't have the products, then we can't built into Revit and built um, BIM ready, if you will, then we cannot compete against um, those that, that do have that information ready to go. So the construction ability to perform real constructability analysis for estimating, clashing, and more is a powerful tool to them. They're really pushing, construction is really pushing um, this BIM process because it's, it's saving them money, it's saving them time, it's saving them headaches of going out to the site and finding out that everything is wrong. That's not happening as much anymore as it used to because they're using the right tools and getting the right deliverable for their projects. It's, because it's creating a smarter design um, that is just being helpful in all of the phases of operations and maintenance and, and everything. And we kind of talked about the why, the why now, just kind of like a little bit more of a wrap up. 
what we, uh, as uh, BPMs, as manufacturers, we want to get ahead of the national and global mandates. We want to make sure that our position in this global change, because it's not just a U.S. change, it's not just um, a regional change, it is happening globally, that we are positioning ourselves in the right way so that we can be competitive against everybody that is, is doing this and, and or even ahead of those that are not doing this. And we're able to basically demonstrate our capabilities to stay current and stay up with technology through this and, and help help out the project. So this is just a, a, a nice little example. It's a, it's a smaller picture that we saw in an earlier slide where you can actually see how throughout the entire system from the smallest little unit up to the, the large rooftop unit and how that system needs to be connected together. And information is actually able to trail through that entire path with the data that's associated to each of the parts. They can tell where there would be a problem, where there's not enough um, piping, where there's uh, too much of a length because it's not reaching that unit um, with, because of the data that's being calculated through the system. Uh, so this is definitely a powerful tool, and um, but they need the part. They need they they need the equipment to be able to to place it and to be able to to connect it to the system to to get these um, this information. If they don't have it, then they they're not able to readily make that information. How can M2 help you? Well, M2 is uh, we are a consultant um, uh, that can manage and ensure that the content is properly formatted and globally available to ensure inclusion in design and construction models, um, practically um, creating a designed in deliverable where it's cheaper and from a sustainability standpoint more important um, to purchase the design equipment system uh, than it is to allow a subcontractor to buy out the equipment based on an antiquated uh, bid buy process that supposedly ensures the most value for the asset owner. M2 is the consultant that can provide the process uh, to ensure that as engineers uh, design a system, they are able to make informed decisions on the interworks of the building. For example, if I am a contractor that is aware of, of manufacturers like Train and the Train component provide the information on the system necessary to ensure it is the best performing available, then I'm going to probably go with a train component over uh, one of their competitors because they have BIM content. Um, they have the information embedded into the model that I'm looking for. It's going to read into my system. It's going to um, calculate the information that I need. So I'm going to go with them as 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 the person that I'm going to use. Um, if I look at other manufacturers within the rooftop unit in industry or even within other product groups, if I download their content, if they have it and it's not a quality piece of content, then that's just going to leave a bad taste in my mouth of how I'm going to uh, work with them moving forward into uh, into future projects as well. So that's another reason why within working with them too, we can basically make sure that we're giving you a, um, a quality piece of content that you can provide out to your customers, the designers that are actually going to be pulling your, pro your product into the building so that um, they know that they're getting a quality piece of content when they come to you. M2 is actually a consultant and can help you manage this and ensure that the content is properly formatted for designers and the design community, as well as help you with any of your manufacturing needs. So we can have um, both conversations with you and educate you on the best path so that you can either solve one of those scenarios or, or basically have a two-directional two placement where you can solve both um, scenarios. So we can absolutely um, look at that and uh, we have a great um, set of people here that have seen both sides of the conversation. There's, they've seen the manufacturing side. They've, they've been a part of, of the design community. So we can um, basically sit in, into those conversations and get you directed to the correct direction that you'd like to go. And if it means you know you, need, you want us to create the content for you because we have the expertise here at M2, we can absolutely do that. So for more information, you can absolutely call us at our 800 number or 877 number here. You can contact us via the web or you can email us at support at m2t.com and our info at m2t.com. And we can absolutely get in touch with you to create a solution that best fits your needs um, moving forward. 
thank you for your time today. Thank you for attending this presentation, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. I hope you have enjoyed this webinar. What does BIM mean for manufacturers?